A lot of people don't like this beach, it's Waikiki Beach, because all the tourists come here. But it's like, it's right next to where I live. So I'm gonna chill here. I'm gonna hang out, walk the line, the beach, I mean the water line, with, where like the water meets the sand, or whatever, on the shore, shoreline. Anyways, I'll get to making a video here in a couple seconds. Just let me relax a little bit. I'm gonna come back here in the afternoon too. This is like amazing. Everybody's paddle boarding, boogie boarding, surfboarding. Uh, I might have to get a rental and just do it. I don't know, probably not. <laughs> Maybe not yet. I'll wait till Addy's here so you can watch me. It's a really bad idea to do it by yourself all alone because you could be rushed out and then nobody knows. I mean, until you're gone for a few days or like when Abby comes home and realizes I'm not there and realize I'm, anyways, go with somebody else. Look at this sand creation. It's a person. I've got to say, working hard out here. Got a bunch of surfers, kind of the area where they all get in, barely, I mean, all the way down to there. But, yeah, you got the rescue team, they pull people out. The water's really shallow for how choppy the waves are, so people are hitting coral if they're not careful. It's gonna be dangerous out there, but, you know, it's a risky take. Hey, what is up people? Oh my goodness, it's been so long since I've made a video. <laughs> I've just been so busy going to the beach or I mean, getting this place all unpacked or ready to actually live in. Uh, but anyways, while I've been here in Hawaii, which I moved from Montana, here to Hawaii, it's been like a few months now, since February. And yeah, the news has just been going insane. Just, I don't know what to believe. There's just so much out there. Everything seems like it's happening all at once. So uh, definitely everybody stay safe out there. Uh, try and be uh, helpful to your fellow man, be kind out there. I don't really know what to say about <laughs> everything. I was trying to think about how to wear my hair today, if I should wear it down like Kurt Cobain, or if I should do the Johnny Depp and pull it all back, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna get into some sneakers. I was like, man, I just need to make a video just to get my mind off of things, but I did forget scissors. Uh, we'll open these ones last. Let's go over like some of the things I recently picked up. The most recent Supreme that I grabbed, um, I picked up the Belt Small Medium. I'm gonna have to figure out a lighting situation. This is crazy by this window, but it's kind of a cool background. So I was like, oh, let's do it. So I did the all over print, the small medium. It fits me well, I wear it at work. And yeah, it's all leather. It says right on there. Come on, where is it? It's on there somewhere. It says it though. And you've got Supreme embroidered on the inside over on this side. And then it's all embossed, or not embroidered, embossed, I mean. And all this front stuff is embossed too. Man, I had this window open because it was like letting in air, and I closed it because of the wind noise, but I gotta I got open this up. This is crazy. Is it that bad? Do you guys like city noise? Okay, this uh, Palm Angel shirt, <laughs> I just got this. This thing is getting the waterworks right now, I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> okay. Something else I picked up, I did sell a bunch of stuff on GOAT and with those GOAT funds, if I transfer them to my bank account, then I get like flagged by the IRS saying that I've sold over $600 or $700 worth of a product and in the year 2022, any reseller selling items and making 700 bucks, you are going to be paying taxes on those or you're going to have to evade the taxes. So reselling for me this year, I don't even know if I'm gonna do it. I'm just picking up stuff I actually wanna wear. And I've been looking at the uh, the fuzzy off-white dunks for a long time with this other um, leather on here, the suede, I don't even know. This is like the hairiest suede I've ever had in my life. I don't even know how it's this fuzzy, can't even read the print on the side here, like look at that, 
Can you guys read that? Can you read that? I mean, come on. It's so bright outside. I don't even know if this video is going to be very use usable. But anyways, yeah, these are my first pickup. Uh, once I sold everything, I've worn them a bit, so I don't have them inside the box right now. The box, although, it is right here. This number 34. Number 34 is amazing because it's got this light blue and then that kind of burnt yellow, almost like the Saturn gold. Man, I should have actually grabbed those. I actually have my Air Max ones that I <laughs> bought in Astro World, or when I went to Astro World, I bought the the Travis Scott Air Max way back in November, and um, finally had them shipped to me. <laughs> but now they're over at Truist Hawaii, one of the shoe stores here, just because I was gonna let them, you know, sell on the shelf and maybe sell <laughs> at the store here locally uh, before I just put them on my feet and everything. Because I do have these ones that are, I mean, not really the same color because of all the blue in them. Um, oh, and with my off-white tags a lot of people maybe like take these off or something I do step on it sometimes um, but for the most part I just put it underneath the front laces it stays out of the way and it still looks good and it stays true to Virgil who designed these and wanted this hang tag on there also these yellow laces are kind of cool the lacelets at the end are like really extra long and almost look like they're dipped which they probably are but yeah I was really glad to pick these up also Everybody here loves Kith. I mean, I love Kith. I have a bunch of old Kith t-shirts because I started grabbing Kith in 2017. I look back in some of my videos from my old ones uh, back when I was a Bible thumper, which I'm totally not anymore. Like, I understand that we all need to be kind to each other and love each other, but there's a lot of people who aren't doing that in the circle I used to be a part of there. Yeah. Anyways, the Kith Air Force One. Here we go. This cream on the sole is just what but it's got me so quickly. So I actually got these new. I've worn them a bit, and I haven't cleaned the bottoms, <laughs> obviously. I've worn them like maybe three times out. I actually purchased those uh, force shields, those rubber or foam force shields that go over the toe box. You don't want to get that crease in there. And they're doing pretty good. This leather is really nice leather, so it's going to have some give to it. So you're going to have a little bit of where your foot bends showing there with the crease, but it's not as bad with that rubber in there. I don't think I taped this one down, but I might. Oh no, I didn't, so yeah. They have two glue strips and you can glue it to the top of the shoe. And they're really soft and pliable, like these things actually don't hurt your feet as opposed to pretty much every other shoe saver. <laughs> but they are foam um, and they don't really stay in place perfectly. That's probably why they have that glue strip, but for these, so far, they've been really well staying in place. I did go with my true size, but with Air Force Ones, they do fit a little big. So thankfully, I did have a little bit of room for my toes. My toes are like pushing that up against there. Kind of like a Yeezy 350 almost, where you're feeling, you know, your foot in the front of the shoe. So, I mean, it's not a feeling I'm unfamiliar with, so it's all right. I love these because it's got that, it's that fuzzy fabric, the velvet almost on the inside. It's not quite velvet. It's like tougher than velvet, I think. Or maybe it is. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, and then it says Kith Air. This at the tongue is my favorite part. Got the islands on there, all eight of them. It says Kith over and over underneath this swoosh. So, yes. Very glad to pick this pair up and the box as well. Here we go. Here's your box. Um, it did come with silver tip laces. But I don't really want to unlace them. I'm cool with this white. There's no other silver on the shoe anywhere unless I was to put those laces on. So, yeah. Um, oh, when I did pick up that Supreme belt, I also picked up some gray. Or, what are these? Olive? <laughs> I don't know why I said gray. They're kind of earth tone. Yeah, so I picked up these Olive Haynes briefs, just a two pack. Um, I wanted to get that mac and cheese because I love mac and cheese. Like, as a kid, I used to go over to my grandma's house every Saturday and she would uh, let us watch cartoons and make us mac and cheese because at my parents house I was only allowed to watch uh, religious films um, <laughs> which is yeah pretty sheltering and obnoxious and it created me into a weird adult human but I've learned to grow out of it with the help of everybody out there all my friends have helped me to learn what's truly important in life like Pata the true importance 
Oh man, when I saw these originally, I was like, man, I gotta cop these, but I just, just kept waiting, kept waiting, kept waiting. And then one of the local stores here in Hawaii posted it on their Instagram, and I was like, all right, save those for me. And they did, and I paid over resale for these. I paid like 400 bucks, and I was just doing it to be nice to the guys, I guess. I don't know, I felt like I was rich at the time. I mean, for a while, I had like $150,000 in my bank account because I saved up a bunch of money to move here. Now I'm down to like $1,000, <laughs> which basically I'm living paycheck to paycheck right now. I've got to get myself uh, together right now. Why am I still buying all this shit? Anyways, uh, <laughs> look at how wavy these are. So beautiful. I really love this color. And then this one actually um, is the other shoe, but yeah. So got some purple down here. This sole is nice and cream. You got all the gray up here, and then you have cream on the tongue again. So it all just really works together well. And then you have the fists in the air, trapata. Um, oh, let's try one of them on at some point. And then there's also the Pata Air Max bracelet with this one. There's one with the bracelet, one without. So we have Pata, we have a flag, we have the little Nike. So then we have Pata, the Nike swoosh. And great little bracelet in there. I understand prices of things are going down online. I bought these probably as prices were at their height and they were about to go down, but I just could uh, I just couldn't wait for some reason. Now they've got another pair at their store that's cheaper, um, but I'm not going to be hurt. I wanted these, and money is money, comes and goes. You're just gonna have to deal with it. I mean, some people lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in their resale game. Zeta Kicks destroyed some people's lives. Um, but here's another pair. I actually won these in the Kith drawing, so I got my little Kith receipt from the Kith here in Honolulu. Uh, just some just some dunks. Some purples. Still smelling fresh and new. Made in Indonesia, it says on the back of the tongue there. But yeah, these are just straight from Kith. It's really hard to go down and get your kicks from Kith because a lot of days I work when I'm supposed to pick them up. They're like, you won, congratulations. Pick up your pair tomorrow at 9 a.m. while I'm at work in, you know, 30 minutes driving away. Uh, anyways, uh, let me get me some scissors. All right, so we're gonna open up these dunks. I've been waiting to open up these pistachios for my next video. And I told myself, oh, I'm gonna open them up in your next video, just wait. Just wait, just wait. You got a bunch of other shoes. Yeah, this tape is insane. It's got all those threads in it. Doesn't tear it easy. There we go. Alright. Go ahead. Oh, look at that box. I love the box already. I haven't watched any unboxing videos for these just so I could kind of be amazed when I saw them or get my reaction, I guess. Maybe not amazed, but I love the ticket situation they got going on with these. We're not supposed to use paper tickets, though. We're supposed to be using our phones for that. We look like old people if we use tickets, right? Oh, man. The inside colors are even different. Okay, here's the tag on the box itself. So it gives you information about the shoe, the size, and everything. Got them in my size, obviously. Got our blue paper here. Very pretty blue paper. More white stuff on it. White paper. And then, our union belt. And this giant piece of cardboard on here. Wow, this bottom thing is perforated. That's insane to like break this off. Nike collaboration with Union. Here we go. This swoosh is like slippery. It's like a plasticky coating on there. The rest of it is just that waterproofing material. We're almost like it's not even waterproof, maybe it's just like a mesh. Yeah, like a plastic transparent mesh. And you got this cool little button on there. I love that button, dude. It's like the best part of the shoe. And but also like the hanging threads. Those are actually pretty dope, I think. Just kind of show you, you know, the the structure, how they build shoes. Normally they would like tie this off and make it all perfect, but they just left it loose, so these strings being long keeps the thread in there. I think if you cut them really short, it might start unraveling. Uh, but then again, they might have put some construction together so that it wouldn't do that. These might just be fake. Um, hard to know. 
So anyways, this back here, also a slippery, plasticky coating on this Nike heel tab, as with the, the same as the swoosh materials. Bottom is all translucent. Let's see, some people have been able to squeeze there. Their shoes and make the bottoms come out a little bit. This one is really stiff, doesn't really do that. Kind of does. <laughs> I know, I've seen videos where people are like, oh, they're fake, you can squeeze the bottom. I'm like, okay, well, shouldn't your foot be able to, like, bend shoes as you're walking? Like, for it to flex a little bit shouldn't necessarily be bad. <laughs> Unless they think all authentic sneakers have, like, a stainless steel plate in the bottom that keeps it completely stiff, which that would be really uncomfortable, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure in most people's opinion, which is why they don't do that with shoes, really. Besides, like, really intense hiking or hunting boots for really cold weather. Definitely a dope sneaker. Let me just get out the other one for you guys. You can see the other color of laces. You can put that one on there to match with your collar here. Or, you know, kind of with the outsole. The outsole is quite a bit lighter of a blue. Um, yeah, so you have your Nike and then your Union Jumping Halo Dude on the inside of the shoes. So, real solid pair. I'm thinking um, I'll save this pair for a while. I know the sneaker market right now is really on a downhill spiral for most every pair. There's some pairs like Travis branded sneakers, like any of the older ones, those ones surprisingly going up in price. Some of the new ones, obviously, pretty much everything that drops new right now looks like it's just going for low prices. Or anything that's dropped recently, or anything that's been talked about on the news recently is having lots of fakes. Seems like all those are really going down in price. Like the, those patent bread ones. Dude, I did not like those from the beginning. I don't like the shiny Jordan ones. I mean, I can hardly wear Jordan ones to begin with. I'm more of a, a Lowe's guy, which every single shoe we looked at today was a low top sneaker, just because that's what looks best on me. Yeah, those patent breads, it's like, how are people paying this much for it? So to see it go down below 300, you know, like 250 or so, I feel good about that shoe being there. Um, but it, you know, it might go up, you never know. It all depends on demand. Like what, what, if someone was to ask me what, how I think resale goes up in price. I think it goes up in price based off of scarcity and marketing. So if a product is marketed out there as being super hip and cool, and if you wear it, you're on the inside cool crowd team, then um, people are gonna want it. And then if you limit it, let's say you release 10,000 pairs, but you know, you have 90,000 people that want it. So people are going to pay extra to buy it from the people who have it. And those people who have it, they don't wanna just give it away because they wanted that thing, you know? And they understand that it's cool to have. And so maybe they don't feel themselves worthy enough to wear it themselves. Maybe they're not in a financial situation where they consider that about themselves. And that's how I am uh, with a lot of shoes I've purchased in the past even, or, or shirts and stuff. I'm trying to break away from that and just wear something because I love it and because you know, I worked hard for it and I bought it for myself to enjoy and not just to sit on a shelf and drool over it and then be sad when somebody buys it from me for, for more or something, which is a lot of what I was doing with selling. Um, and that's not a good place to be coming from. Anyways, basically like let's say there are 10,000 pairs and, and let's say somebody rigs the system and buys 5,000 of them. So now there's only 5,000 of them to go around for the people who can just get like one per user or something. So somebody has 5,000 over here and they're gonna set their prices at let's say on a thousand percent premium. So let's say it's a hundred dollars. They're gonna set theirs for eleven hundred dollars. So eleven hundred dollars for a shoe that normally costs a hundred and they've got five thousand of them all set at that price. Now all these people who are getting them you know for a retail they really want to wear the shoe because they want to be in the cool crowd. They're probably not going to wear them because they see they're going online for eleven hundred dollars. Like I only spent a hundred this is like winning the lottery which I mean it sort of is when you hit on the sneakers app on a shoe that's like limited like when I hit on those uh, Union Force I was like oh man I won the lottery basically won like four hundred bucks or whatever it was what the resale was over over retail back then. I haven't checked recently on that shoe because I sold it a while ago and I, I'm not into that sneaker. It's just maybe too too loud for me. Like, those people who bought that shoe for a hundred bucks, they see it's online for eleven hundred. They're gonna want to post it for a thousand. So they're gonna undercut those other resellers. So there's a bunch of people who get it, they get it right away and they want to sell it right away. So they go on the market, they see what the value is, 
they see that um, there's like 5,000 pair or you know so many pairs are listed for a really high price so they're just gonna go a little bit under they'll sell that pair that person who bought that pair they're either gonna wear it or they're thinking that the price is even gonna go higher because it's such a limited item so that even they hold it after paying a thousand dollars for it because they think oh it's going for eleven I got a hundred dollars off of resale you know premium or whatever and so they try and uh, hold it until it would go to two thousand or whatever it would do let's I mean the Jordan 1 Union obviously is a good example of uh, a shoe doing that but that was back when the market was different now we're in a time where the market is kind of gotten more even it's not just constantly going up everything you buy is going to resell and I really blame that on this whole crash of this Nike and StockX lawsuit happening right now and once it kind of blows over and all this talk of fake sneakers being in the authentic sneaker market I think it's gonna pick up quite a bit there are still a lot of items that are obviously reselling so you can pick and choose and make some better decisions that way buy what you like enter some raffles one other thing you could do is don't buy stuff that is gonna put you in a financially bad situation like if if you can't really afford to put it on your credit card then just don't do it just wait until you do have the funds you know, sell some stuff and bring yourself up to that point where you can afford to go after the next drop. And then, you know, when there is a situation where you can buy something for a good deal, sometimes you're just gonna have to pass, you know, if you don't have the funds. Like, don't be putting yourself into a situation where you need to sell something in order to, like, get yourself to even, you know, to, like, don't put yourself in that much debt. That stuff has to sell to pay off the debt. If you are in that situation already, that's okay. You can definitely work your way out of it. You're just gonna have to slowly start selling things off. Try not to just let things go. A lot of times if you sell stuff for too low of a price, you're gonna run into a bunch of return issues where people wanna return stuff because whenever somebody buys something for less than the value of the market, they automatically think that it's a replica item. And so when they get it in hand, they automatically claim it as replica. So they try and get a free item and get their money back. So they can look cool supporting what might be authentic, but they're, they're, they don't care as much because people probably don't ask them. And they also get it for free. So definitely be careful. Uh, make sure you have all your documentation for proving things are authentic. Have that breadcrumbs, you know, the email threads of the transactions and everything. I'm showing how much maybe you paid for an item or the store you got it from, those receipts and everything. And then also with buying sneakers, I would just buy them for retail if you want to make sure everything's authentic. Like this stuff that I got from the resale market, I'm pretty sure these are authentic. They look great. They are from StockX. So I don't know. The price just went crazy down. I was watching them. They were like 800 or so. I got these for 400. That's a great price. I mean, these off-whites. I was waiting for these to go down for a while. I kept offering bids and bids and bids on different pairs. And I don't know if they're authentic. They look good. They look really good. I have the number eight pair and they look exactly the same. The boxes look pristine. They look like they're authentic. They smell like it. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. It's hard to uh, really know these days though because those fake producers are getting so perfect at it. So um, it's a really touchy subject and there's no clean, cut and dry, easy way to answer it. Um, just wear what you think is cool for you and what you're comfortable with. I wouldn't go around uh, saying your shoes are a replica or to be constantly saying that you're okay with reps just because of uh, the ethical situation that you kind of find yourself in where you don't really care about legality or things like that or the rights to artwork. Like somebody makes art, they should be able to own the rights to that art or not have people steal it all the time. Also, I know Nike kind of gets a bad rap for having uh, bad practices with not paying their workers enough or uh, things of that nature, not treating their employees correctly. Um, they have really turned that around since the thir 12 or 13 years since that story broke. They've really gotten a lot better and they're even trying to do zero carbon emissions for some of their products, which is amazing. Um, and with the replica market, you're really just gonna find people being treated badly in those factories. There's really not any replica manufacturers. They can be transparent about the whole production of their product just because they're kind of doing it in secret to begin with because if they came out and said it, then obviously they'd be shut down by the brands that they are copying. So again, I don't know a whole lot about this. You guys can definitely hit me up in the comments if you got more information about the replica market, about how they work and all that stuff. I just try not to get into it. I try to only buy stuff from Supreme like when they drop and then if, like if I didn't get this belt I just wouldn't have 
had this belt. Although that one Supreme hat with the flags on it, I did get that from the resale market because I wanted it so badly, and I didn't think the price was going to be insane, which it really wasn't too bad compared to retail. Anyways, I'm just going to keep going about my day, working hard, and trying to spread some love and joy around. Everybody's stressed out, so let's try and lower the stress mood just by um, being kind to people around us being thoughtful and I'm not gonna say we're gonna be perfect at it we're still gonna have times where you know we mess up and be extremely selfish but we can just work past those situations ask for forgiveness and kind of maybe talk through why your brain went to that situation like why did it go down this pathway of depression or, or whatnot what started it you can always kind of step back and reflect afterwards it's always a good thing to do but anyways I love you all definitely stay positive out there and yeah shotgun but have a party in the hood. Hey, work but a stack on try to get a pill. Ever since it changed my life, I'ma walk that walk on try to get a price. Tryna do right now.